Hello guys, it's Dennis aka Virtual Bacon. I don't think I've fully ever introduced myself. Uh, you guys know me, I'm a developer, a YouTuber, and a crypto VC investor. And since you already follow this channel, you know I share the best bits of crypto research, projects, and narratives. But today, I wanted to do something a little different. I could sit here and tell you which cryptos to buy all day long, but more often than not, I find myself caring more about the person's backstory. So today, I want to take this whole video to cover my story and my crypto journey and how the last nine years that I have been dealing with crypto have completely changed my life with ups and downs. So sit back, relax, and let me walk you through my entire crypto journey. And hopefully by the end, you can find some interesting takeaways. So how did I actually get into crypto? I know I say that I have been investing in crypto for six years. That's because the earliest time that I have invested in a project through an ICO was around 2017. But I actually first got into crypto nine years ago in 2014. The first crypto that I ever touched and owned was actually Doge Dogecoin. My crypto journey started with mining Dogecoin in 2014 in my college dorm room. This was a very coincidental time. So in 2014, during my first year of college, uh, I lived in the college dorm room, which had no electricity costs. And at that time, I was super into building computers from scratch with computer hardware, uh, different graphics cards, etc. And I had another friend that has been mining Bitcoin for a little while who is also building PCs. And he told me about this thing called Dogecoin. Uh, first as a meme, but eventually we realized that Dogecoin was actually super profitable to mine with uh, GPUs, with graphics cards that anyone can do. This was especially so when we didn't have to pay electricity in our dorm room. I couldn't do a large mining farm or anything, but I did put together one powerful PC to mine Dogecoin that was essentially covering a lot of my uh, living costs in college. So on these mining calculators back in the days for Dogecoin, uh, the turnaround for the PC investment was only three to six months at the 2014 bull run period. So this meant that whatever uh, amount of investment I put into building the PC, three to six months in, I would make all the money back that I initially invested. And then from their point on, it's all profit. Now, initially, my mining rig was super ghetto. It was actually built in one of these laundry baskets. I skipped using a PC case at all because for mining, uh, what you care about the most is actually the cooling cost. So because the graphics cards are running all the time, it always heats up and you need a lot of airflow and a lot of fans. So this isn't my setup, but my setup looks very similar to this because laundry baskets, they're very cheap. Uh, they have these essentially these uh, whole hooks that you can just sit the motherboard on top of and they have just insane cooling. The only downside is that they were very loud. So uh, I had sometimes I had trouble sleeping. The graphics cards we were using back then were very old uh, AMD cards actually. AMD graphics cards used to be much better than NVIDIA graphics cards for mining. I don't know if that's still the case today. The few cards I used were uh, HD 7970 and some R9 280Xs. By the end of our mining ventures in college, I eventually graduated to these milk crate mining rigs. This is actually pretty standard that's still used today, where you still have the really good cooling with these milk crates, but because it's a square setup, so essentially it's much more stackable. You you can stack multiple milk crates on top of each other and because they are a rectangle and the site is just about the right length for the gpu to fit in you can essentially build these uh, rigs where you can have four to five cards for each uh, mining rig so at my max peak i think i had about four cards that's about it so i wasn't a huge miner but this was definitely a fun project and afforded me a lot of bills and I actually dug up some of my old payout emails from this multi pool. So, so in order to mine Dogecoin or any coin for that matter, you couldn't really just mine it by yourself because uh, the competition is very fierce. So most people will have to join a mining pool. So the one I used was called multi pool. Uh, this essentially was I directed my machines to them and they would mine the most profitable ones for me. So you see, most of the time we were mining Dogecoin. Sometimes it was like MEC, LOT, FTC. I don't know what these. And you see here is a typical payout. So here it looks like every other day I was getting 5,000 Doge directly sent to my wallet. If I just had been holding these until the Dogecoin run up, 
this would have been worth two, three thousand dollars worth every other day. However, back then I didn't know any better. I didn't even have my own wallet. I kept all my funds on this uh, old crypto exchange that supported altcoins called Cryptsy. Some of you OGs might know this. This is very, very old exchange. And uh, unfortunately, the founder ran away with the money and well, I lost all the Dogecoin. Now, after the brief period of mining Doge for one year, the first crypto bear market came uh, in late 2014, early 2015. This was the longest and most brutal bear market in crypto history. And the young me quickly lost interest in crypto and moved on to my studies. So in school, I studied software engineering. So I was doing coding all day. And this actually played out really well later on. And I'll talk about that in a bit. And because of the bear market, Dogecoin's price also had its first major crash from this period uh, from 0.1 cent all the way down to 0.01 cent. So crashed 90 percent. And obviously the mining profitability all went uh, away. And I essentially turned my mining rig into gaming rigs and started playing games all day again. Now, fast forward to 2017 or so when I was in my last year of university, I was trying to figure out which area of software development I want to go into for my career after graduation. I had a couple internships at that time, but nothing was really interesting. All the positions felt very powerless and the code I wrote really did not matter. I especially remember this one interview that I had with Amazon for their summer internship. This was a multi-step interview where you first had to do a coding test. And if you scored well, then you get a second round with a real person. Now, I wasn't a super good coder or anything, but I did finish their coding problem and got to the real person interview. But the interviewing judge really pissed me off, to be honest, because he didn't even know my name. He came onto the call late and only asked the most generic questions and then quickly rejected me. So to get some clarity, I went on these Facebook groups for the Amazon uh, internship. And I basically heard that the program only cares about who can code the fastest in their coding test. And if you finish the problems super quick, then you don't even need to meet a real person for the interview. So imagine that. Uh, if you were fast enough, don't even know if you are a real person or if you speak any English at all or what you looked like or what your name was. They don't care about any of that. All they cared about is how fast you can code. And on top of this, I also found that all the coding interview questions were already posted in the same Facebook groups. They were using a very small set of uh, coding questions. So basically, the company doesn't care if you cheat, doesn't care if you can present yourself or have any social skills at all, and only cares about how fast you can code and essentially just treats you like a number. This was super depressing for me at the time because Amazon was like one of the greats in the tech world to work in. And I really didn't know what to do after, but I definitely at that point committed to myself that I want to do something meaningful with my coding skills, even if I'm not a super good coder and I wouldn't work in Silicon Valley or at some huge company. I still want my software to be useful and for me to directly communicate with the consumer and figure out what they're using and they can know that it's me that created the program and they can understand that, okay, this is how it functions, etc. I don't want to just be one of uh, 10,000 pieces. So this led to a period of confusion in my career path. And right about this time in mid 2017, I stumbled upon this video from Vitalik himself talking about Ethereum. So this here, uh, this video has 1.6 million views. You can find this on YouTube today still. This is essentially Vitalik Buterin explaining Ethereum. And he basically goes on and says that Ethereum is this decentralized world computer that anyone can develop on and have their programs be shared by everyone else in the world. Anyone can access uh, no matter, you know, if you're a good coder or a bad coder, nobody can stop your code. At that time, I had a very vague understanding of the Bitcoin blockchain and how blockchains work. I knew how a Bitcoin and Dogecoin was actually a fork of Bitcoin, and they were all basically transaction based UTXO based blockchains that you can send and receive coins. So I understood that part. But uh, when it comes to the programmability and Ethereum and smart contracts, this concept seemed possible, but very far-fetched. You have to consider how early this all was. Just look at this guy, Vitalik. If you, you know, forget that you already know him and he's the founder of Ethereum, look at him. He's either a super genius or a complete scammer. <laughs> That's exactly how I felt before. Either way, I was intrigued enough and I went in and started researching Ethereum. I remember quite vividly, I bought my first Ethereum around August 2017 when it was around $300. 
And this was my second cryptocurrency. Uh, the first one was Dogecoin and the second was Ethereum. I still even have not touched Bitcoin at this point. There's this common saying in crypto that it takes two cycles for you to make any money. I think this is absolutely true. My first official crypto cycle was 2017 to 2018 when I was actually actively trading and investing. And I learned the most amount in this period. 2017 was a wild ride. There was essentially one use case of Ethereum back then, and that was ICOs. And the whole market was driven by speculation. In 2017, I was a super degenerate gambler. I had about $20,000 left over from my student loans that were not going to be used. So I used all of it to test out every type of crypto scheme you can think of. I have tried these pump and dump signal groups uh, where you have 40,000 people all get into this Telegram group and the only owner would say, oh, at a certain blah, blah, blah period, we're going to uh, pump this coin and I'm going to release the ticker at this time. And you see they have uh, since dug into the research of these and found out exactly how this scams people. Essentially, the group owners already bought into the coins early. And then once they release the coin, they start dumping on the uh, on their other followers. I have tried many times to beat this game. I even tried bots to uh, bot their signal and then trade on the same time at the exchanges, but always lost money. Same thing for these type of uh, doubling your money scams. It seems very basic at uh, today's times, but in 2017, 2018, this was all very convincing. So I did plenty of these uh, <laughs> where I was just sending Bitcoin to random people, hoping that it comes back 2x and it never happened. I was also spraying and praying into a whole bunch of ICOs. I had no idea what any of them were. Some of them did turn out pretty well, but a lot of them also exit scammed and completely didn't even release any tokens. I even lost a little bit of money in the infamous BitConnect. Overall, in 2017 and 2018 was the period where I lost the largest chunk of my personal wealth in crypto. Out of the $20,000 I put in, I lost around $15,000 and only cashed out about $5K at the 2018 top. But luckily, because I was still in school and didn't have too much money to lose, this was okay and I felt terrible, but you know, it is what it is. It was an expensive lesson. I also know my mom watches my YouTube videos. So if you're watching this mom, uh, now you know why for a brief period in college, uh, I didn't have much money to uh, pay for food. So <laughs> this is essentially what happened. From 2017 to 2019, during the last bear market, this was basically the time where I learned the most. I learned all my trading skills during this period, mostly through trial and error and just following other legitimate channels. Following the right channels definitely made the biggest difference. So I can recommend you some of the CT trading legends I learned a lot from. The number one teacher is definitely CryptoCred. His TA and risk management series on YouTube is by far the best free videos you can find. It's so in-depth and it's definitely very crucial to teach you risk management and how you can evaluate each trade and how you can effectively set stop loss and take profit to make sure that on average over the long term you are profitable. Trader Main is another legend. Uh, I followed his signals and his analysis a lot even since 2017. He is actually one of the OGs and he taught me a lot about range trading during the bear market chops. Another legend that's still very active, Hasaka. Uh, he taught me how to spot the typical bull trap and bear trap patterns on Bitcoin with swing failure patterns and even the barred patterns that you hear of people talking about so much. These kind of fake pumps, I learned to trade all of these from Hasaka. Crypto Horn Hairs is another great profile that gives trade setups with simple order block and support and resistance analysis. This is essentially where I learned how to draw all of the horizontal support and resistance levels, how to find them and how to use them with breakout retests, etc. I learned all of that from him. And lastly, there is one book that I highly, highly recommend every single trader to get, and that is this called uh, Technical Analysis of the Financial Markets by John Murphy. This is actually a huge book, almost like a textbook. It's very thick. It's not too big, but it's very thick. And it will cover essentially every type of TA you can find and how to use them. It's in this book that I learned the most important concept of trading, which is trends, to follow trends and how trends tend to continue once they're established and only you should follow them until they are broken. And up until today, you often hear me talking about higher highs and higher lows, lower highs, to lower lows, how to spot uh, simple uptrends, downtrends, sideways trends in order to determine uh, if you should be betting on overall upside, overall downside or sideways chop. This is the fundamental basis of all my analysis that I still use today. And I learned it from this book. 
Now, by late 2018, I was fresh out of engineering school and eager to start coding. So I also jumped straight into decentralized app development. Before I started working full time in crypto, I was actually a software developer first. And my first few jobs were a full stack engineer. I was creating full stack web apps using the typical web technology, HTML, CSS, JavaScript, React was my framework of choice, uh, Node.js, Express, Python as backend, uh, SQL database, NoSQL, and then cloud deployment, AWS. Uh, I was doing some Firebase also, uh, Kubernetes, Docker, everything. Now, one unique skill set that I had, which was that I understood how Ethereum and the blockchain worked, and I could write some basic Solidity smart contracts. I learned these skills when I was still going to the hackathons during school and when I was degening into Ethereum ICOs. In 2019, I started working at a software consulting firm to make apps for clients and specifically Web3 apps that had some form of Ethereum smart contracts built in. Most of the time in 2019, people just need you to make something very simple, like a copy paste uh, crypto wallet app and then deploy their ERC20 token to Ethereum mainnet or launch a ICO contract that simply collects Ethereum in and then uh, records how much Ethereum each address sent in and then later on distributes those tokens. Those were basically the main functionalities that people wanted. So this was a very easy job and I did that for about half a year. Afterwards, I moved on to another software firm that works on blockchain protocols. This company is called Streaming Fast, and it's still very active today. You might have heard of them. They are actually one of the two core teams behind the Graph protocol. At Streaming Fast, essentially, the team was building custom blockchain nodes, search engines, indexers, explorers, etc. for all of the different chains out there. We worked with EOS, Ethereum, Tron, Solana, and many others. Now, personally, I'm not a hardcore infrastructure developer. I understood how the blockchain works at a decent level, and I can make user-facing smart contracts relatively well. So that was my role at the company, to build tools and build boilerplates and example projects that helped onboard developers. 2018 and 2019 were two super valuable years in my career because I was able to put my software engineering skills to practice in order to deepen my understanding to the whole blockchain technology stack. From what nodes are and consensus algorithms are to the different chains and how uh, they are very different in their design, in how many validators they have, how decentralized they are, and how this directly impacts uh, the scalability, the throughput, and the finality of these blockchains to how smart contracts work and how they're best designed for security. I understood a lot of things at a decent level in this period in order to synthesize them later on for my investing journey. By late 2019, I made a super super risky decision that completely changed my career path. After working with some of the most brilliant engineers, I realized that I wasn't a top level developer that can do this for my whole life. While I appreciated the technology and can really dive deep to understand things, I much preferred to explain the concepts and focus on the education. I also couldn't sit down at the desk and code for eight hours a day. By midday, I would be super bored already and couldn't focus anymore. Beyond that, I also had a burning passion for creating videos ever since I got into college. Here's another fun fact about me. I used to make tech review videos way back in 2015. Here's a clip of me reviewing uh, and comparing four of the flagship phones back then, iPhone 6S, uh, Samsung S6, OnePlus 2, and iPhone 6. And you can see the whole shebang here. This was 2015. October 23rd and I was already doing tech review videos and these videos were pretty amateur but I had a lot of fun and I was spending a lot of time on these. I made a whole bunch of videos and some of these were still getting you know 10 20,000 views here and in fact you might notice these videos were all done in 100% Chinese and I was making these on Blibli and Youku in China uh, pretty crazy if you think about it I was able to review phones in Chinese so late 2019 I sat down and seriously considered how I can make a living by combining two of my biggest passions number one being crypto and number two being videos and essentially I wanted to make a crypto video channel and make it big in an already saturated world. I ended up starting on TikTok first because at the time TikTok was just starting up in the US market and most of the videos were only dances and memes. Uh, this was fresh off of their merger with Musical.ly. 
But I knew the app had much more potential since I had already seen it happen in the Chinese version of TikTok. Since TikTok was a Chinese app, the Chinese version usually had more features and more events type of content a couple years ahead of the game. In 2019, TikTok was already huge in China with educational content essentially acting as the YouTube of China. So this is why I chose to go all in on crypto TikTok. In October 2019, I started making crypto TikTok videos with my online name, Virtual Bacon. And you can still find some of my oldest videos just by scrolling down on my TikTok profile. You have to scroll for a while because I have like 1500 videos on here. So see, my first TikTok video about crypto was 2019, October 21st. And this was me talking about Facebook Libra. Very interesting. Okay. And I was talking about Bitcoin Explained, Blockchain Explained. China was already launching CBDC then. That's pretty crazy. So the first year of posting on TikTok was actually brutal. The first year, the first, let's say 300 videos, I was getting 300 views to 700, sometimes 1000 views max. You got to remember, this was both the early days for TikTok and for crypto. Number one, most people still thought TikTok was only for dances and memes. And also everyone thought crypto was dead and was a scam because this was bear market. This was 2019. So there was literally nobody that were making crypto videos on TikTok in early 2020. But somehow I just had blind faith that I knew this was going to work. This had to work. So I just kept grinding on TikTok. And if I did one video and it wasn't enough, I did three videos a day to test what works. Sometimes I even did five videos a day. I must have posted over a thousand TikToks in 2020 alone. And you can find all of them just by scrolling on my TikToks. Honestly, super proud of myself for this year of grind because it really paid off. And funny enough, the only other channel that I came up with together was BitBoy on TikTok. If you are an OG TikTok follower of mine for the past four years, I super, super appreciate you being here truly uh, through thick and thin. And please leave me down a comment below and let me know what you think about my content that has been evolving over the years. Okay, now I actually wasn't very active on YouTube until 2022. I was always a TikTok and YouTube shorts guy first. I have been reposting my TikTok over to YouTube for multiple years, but it was only after these short form videos got super saturated with everyone copying each other and just clipping out uh, podcast clips, I realized that I needed to branch out to create longer form evergreen content. So I started to go ham on YouTube in late 2022. So you see right around this period, about 11 months ago, I started creating YouTube videos very consistently. By this time, I also had a bit more disposable income. So I am lucky to have a team working with me for the past year to come up with video research and editing and all the help. Now, our approach to the YouTube channel is simple. I think too many of the YouTube crypto content is just copy pasting what everyone else is saying. There are very few narratives that get thrown around over and over again, like AI and crypto gaming, but usually YouTube channels catch them too late, so you don't get actual alpha. And then there are the trading stuff, which are either too aggressive day trading with 100x leverage with no fundamental analysis, or they are too conservative and says nobody should trade. You should only DCA, DCA Bitcoin every day, which is also kind of boring. So I really wanted to form the Virtual Bacon channel with two principles. Number one, I want all of our content to be original. The ideas can be borrowed. I can look at someone else's title and thumbnail for like a top passive income or top AI coins, but that's all I take from it. I will find my own passive income sources or my own coins. And then the analysis has to be something that I personally believe in. Number two, I wanted to present the most actionable strategy. This means I look at both the price action and charts for an entry and exit, as well as fundamental analysis to formulate why I'm taking each position. Now, you might wonder how has the experience been like growing the YouTube channel in the last year? To be honest, YouTube is a super hard game. I have done short videos on TikTok for multiple years before, and I had even decent success reaching 320K followers, but that I did all by myself, and you just needed to put in a lot of effort. However, on YouTube, it's really a strategy, a skill, trial and error, and a team effort. If you don't have a team, it's very difficult to make it on YouTube. So for this, I really want to thank my team who make this happen and the people who love me and put up with my long hours. 
the reality is that we put a ton of time into creating these videos. Usually each video takes about 10 hours to make in total. From researching the video and finding the interesting angles to talk about, to actually writing the script and putting in the visuals so I can show them on screen, to the filming, the editing, doing the titles, thumbnails, tags, optimizing them, to managing the comments after, and then afterwards checking in on the analytics to see what worked, what doesn't, what can we improve on each time after each video. It really takes a whole process and the team to do it consistently. Lots of people think YouTubers just make easy money, but currently it is not some money printing machine. I personally spend about $15,000 a month on the whole team's salary right now just to keep things running. The actual income from our ad revenue, exchange partnerships, sponsorships, everything else, all the income total together just about covers that cost. So I am actually just at break even. Then why do I still do this thing? The main reason are two. Number one is that I just love making videos. You guys saw I've been making tech videos since forever ago. And especially for crypto videos, this is like double my interest. And number two, having this public profile that showcases my knowledge in crypto and teaching everyone is a perfect complement for my VC investing career. I say this in every video intro, I do have another job as a crypto VC investor. This is a flexible job, but still requires about 10 to 15 hours of work per week. So let's get into how I became a crypto VC investor and briefly what that looks like. I have been investing in ICOs and IEOs since 2017, but only as an individual. In 2020, when my TikTok videos started to do well, I started to make a name for myself by being a trader and a DeFi degen. So I was making a lot of trading videos showing my exact positions, and I made some really good calls on the early farmings. Uh, I was actually posting about farming compound and farming Ampleforth, farming Yam, farming Sushi, farming YFI, all on TikTok, which was honestly nobody else was on TikTok talking about this. So I was getting recognized, and I was actually approached by a VC firm called the Momentum Six. Now, at first, we were just sharing DeFi Alpha and degening together among friends. But once I got to know the team, I really wanted to join their firm. These guys were super genuine and were helping a lot of projects and giving them marketing exposure and helping them shape up their tokenomics, helping them with their DeFi design, etc. And it just so happens that they were looking for a technical person to do due diligence on their new investment deals, someone to read the software code for these new projects to make sure that they are legit. So I was a natural fit. A lot of people are curious about the qualifications to become a crypto VC. A VC in crypto is very different from VC in the Web2 world. World. The specific qualifications is very vague because the industry is very new. In general, I think there are three main categories you need to have. Number one, you need to have your own capital that you have built up through an investing track record. Nobody cares how much you claim to a good investor, a good trader. You need to show your trades on the blockchain, on your wallet, and show it actually gaining in value and what you have bought into, what you have farmed over the years. So I was able to show this just with my wallet. This was one of my oldest wallets that has been active for 1,350 days. I have been using this wallet for a while, but this one has over 4,000 transactions on Ethereum mainnet, which uh, the gas alone of that is going to be a few hundred thousand dollars. So that's number one. You need proof that you are a good investor by yourself. Number two, you need to bring value to the firm outside of just putting money in. Whether that's technical coding skills, uh, your personal networks, financial analysis of companies, if you are a CFA, for example, uh, are you good at operation and management to work with the team? Do you have a deep understanding of DeFi protocol designs to help uh, portfolio companies? All of these skills are needed in a VC firm team to evaluate and help new projects. And the number three qualification is that you need to be ready to lose money. Tons of people want to work in crypto as a VC and to become an investor because they think it's easy money, free money. But let me tell you, crypto VCs lose a ton of money in the bear markets just as much as retail does. Although I have made money in the bull market, I also have personally lost well over a million dollars through our VC investment deals in 2022 alone. This is not because the investments were mistakes or scams, but simply because the bear market takes out 95% of the projects. 
projects run out of money either by spending too much because they were still in their bull market mode or simply because while well, the market crashed too much and they kept their money either on FTX, on Celsius, Voyager, or they kept it uh, holding in Bitcoin, Ethereum, or even sometimes some speculative altcoins and those uh, treasury themselves lost a lot of money. On top of this, the projects cannot launch their tokens since there's no buying interest in the bear market, so they have to extend further and further and burning more money. This is why 95% of the projects that VCs invested in in the bear market lost all of their traction and essentially went to zero. For retail investors, they might think this is unacceptable. How can you get no returns when you invest money in anything? The project is a scam. They should go to prison. But for VCs, the point is to take these early risks and expect 95% of projects to fail. Only this way can you justify making 20 to 30x on one or two projects a year and essentially still become profitable in on average. Even though this sounds crazy, it still hasn't stopped us from talking to new projects and being excited to invest in strong founders. Some of our recent investments that I'm super proud of, uh, for example, Bubble Maps, this was the most popular uh, new way to visualize blockchain explorers, visualize tokens by looking at the top token holders and how each address uh, for the tokens all relate to each other. So you can kind of cluster them out to see if a whale holds a large amount of the total supply. So Bubble Maps, we were one of the top investors in here and have been working with the team for a while. Super proud of this. These type of platforms with real traction, definitely worth investing even in the bear market. Another project that I have talked about a couple times, Ready Games, I truly believe this is the best uh, Web3 mobile gaming platform that's actually converting uh, real players from Web2 into Web3, real studios. Uh, these are big studios with big titles that we're talking about on mobile with hundreds of thousands of uh, annual recurring players. So Ready Games is the technology powering all of this. In fact, we just started an accelerator program called Symbiote. Uh, this program not only provides investment funding, but also I myself and many other advisors from the team and our close partners will work with the project teams personally for about four Four months to help them with everything around their crypto business, whether that's designing their tokenomics, their brand positioning, uh, reviewing their actual code, running their community, connecting them to projects or exchanges. We do everything together, essentially becoming partners of the projects. This is our accelerator program. So if you are a serious crypto project founder in the angel or pre-seed stage, we would love to talk to you and see how we can help. So you can check out the accelerator program on symbiote.gg and just submit a form to apply and you can reach me personally and we can jump on a call. Really, the behind the scenes of crypto VC investing warrants a whole nother video. If you want to see that, leave a comment down below on what topics you are interested in in the VC world. And I will cover this whole area in a new video soon. Okay, that brings us to the present day where Bitcoin is at $26,000 still in 2023. I don't plan to stop creating videos or investing anytime soon. In fact, I think now in 2023 is the worst time to be leaving crypto. The space is just about to turn around in 2024, right around the Bitcoin halving event in April. The Bitcoin spot ETF is also coming around then and the next quantitative easing is coming back from the Fed. If anything, now is the time to go as hard as you can in crypto. I have complete faith in my conviction right now because I have gone through it twice already. In the 2015 bear market, if I had just kept my Dogecoin and kept looking into the market and kept mining, it would have been the perfect opportunity to get in on the Ethereum ICO since it was the coin that all the GPU miners flooded to for its profitability. This would have been a 10,000x return. In the 2019 bear market, I did take advantage and accumulated my skills in trading and TA and also in blockchain development, which paid off massively in the bull run. Now, in the 2023 bear market, I am not only accumulating crypto holdings, but also building my brand and business as fast as possible so that I can reap the rewards when the bull run comes in the next two years. While I believe Bitcoin and Ethereum will survive and keep growing for 10 plus years from now, 
this next crypto cycle really might be the last chance that everyday people can take advantage of exponential returns. Once BlackRock comes in and the industry reaches $10 trillion in sites, the market will be so saturated and institutional driven, and the exponential returns could disappear completely. And that's why if you have been on the fence, hopefully my video today and my whole crypto journey can act as an example to tell you that the bear markets are really the time to go ham and to go all in crypto if you truly want to make a name for yourself in this space. Okay, that's my entire nine year crypto origin story of how I got started in crypto to what I'm doing today and in the future. If you watch this video till the very end, thank you. You are truly one of my true fans that is actually interested in my personal story. And hopefully you have found something interesting at least and funny from this video. So to keep updated with me, make sure to follow me on X at virtualbacon0x. Also, we have just opened up our Discord server. You can find it on virtualbacon.com or with the link in the description, discord.gg slash virtualbacon. It's completely free and you can find trade alerts and altcoin alpha from me and other analysts. You can also ask questions and share alpha with other expert investors. That's it for this video. Thank you guys for watching and I will see you in the next one.